Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-19. Our last foray with the adventuring group showed them that money wasn't everything, and the party gifted over some of their reward to Dingus and the orphans to get them a residence of their own. The group was also confused about Welby seeing Commander Roush giving a key to Lothar as he was being dragged away to prison. The group is separated, with Sister Elaine taking the money to the Temple of Dilo for safekeeping, before meeting with the halfling rogue to go look for Gregor Finewire. We pick up the adventure in a dimly lit room with a trio of men having a heated discussion. I have had enough of the excuses and the failures on the part of your people, said one man in a deep voice. The loss of the storehouse is going to cost me dearly. He pointed at one of the shadowy figures and addressed him. Commander, I expect you to perform better considering the amount of funding that is going into your pockets. This setback is going to mean less pay for you and your men. Resolve the issue or worse will occur. The man nodded and left the room quickly. After several moments of silence and wine being poured into a goblet, the deep-voiced man continued. What about your problem. Has it been resolved, or do I need to slash more of your pay? A high-pitched voice spoke up, stating that the issue had been partially resolved, which garnered a quick rebuke from the deep-voiced man. Apologies flowed out of the timid man's mouth. I, 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 I took care of him, but he, he don't got it. I, I heard that those heroes from the sewers, they, they gave it to the wrong guy, but I guess they got it back. I guess, I guess they must still have it, he muttered. You guess. You guess. Your guesses don't mean mule shit to me, Ober. I want that box. I don't care what it takes or how you come up with it. Just get it, get it soon, and get it clean. Do you understand, said the man with a deep voice. The timid man again spewed forth a spring, string of apologies and quickly hastened himself out of the room. As the door shut, the deep-voiced man took a long draw from the goblet and slammed it down. <sighs> Where did I find such idiots? Do you have anything to add? He said to a shadowy figure. An older, attractive woman emerged from the shadows. Shh, my lord, she said as she adjusted his hair. Everything is going to work out despite having such idiots. My augury has shown me this. She kissed him upon the forehead and took his hand, leading him back to a small room. Is that him? What about that guy? How about him? Pestered Welby O'Toole until Sister Elaine came to a complete stop. Chastising the diminutive rogue, the woman pointed out that none of these people were Gregor Finewire, and she would most certainly point them out if she spotted him. Just then, a loud growl escaped from her stomach, and she blushed with embarrassment. The pair looked at each other and well quipped, I agree with your belly. I'm hungry. Looking around, the halfling pointed to a nearby business. Repository of ruination? Are you kidding? Didn't we get in enough trouble last time you guys were in there? exclaimed the cleric. The rogue quickly corrected her, pointing out that the last time they had visited the establishment, they were making compensatory payment for damage that occurred while they were present, and not directly associated with their visit. Shaking her head, Sister Elaine, unable to argue, agreed to the business. As their eyes became accustomed to the dim lighting, the chesty barmaid had spotted them and motioned them to a small table along the back wall. Are your friends going to be joining you? She inquired. 
When she was advised that it was only the two of them, she looked disappointed and asked what they wanted. A quick recitation of the menu followed and the two adventurers made their choices. A few moments later, the woman returned with a mug of ale and a glass of wine before waiting on her other customers. The pair took in the sights of the bar and noticed that the clientele had not improved since their last visit. Several patrons had fresh injuries but did not seem to notice the adventurers as they huddled next to the small table. Ooh, a card game has started, pointed out Welby as he rose and began to stride over the table. Sister Elaine grabbed him by the collar and dragged him back quickly, pointing out that there was no way she was going to let him get into that kind of trouble. A drunk stumbled by, and the cleric caught a glimpse of the halfling's hand slide along the man's belt line. An angry look greeted the rogue as his smile quickly dissipated. He slapped a jeweled dagger onto their table with a loud, Fine! He was probably just going to cause a problem with it anyway, the man declared. Adding that a jewel was missing from the pommel, the cleric quickly swiped the item off the table and into her robe, checking to make sure no one had noticed the theft. Feeling safe that the borrowing had not been noticed, she reprimanded her associate and added that the item probably didn't even belong to the man from the appearance. The food arrived a few moments later and each sat had their glasses refilled. While enjoying some tasty pork, the twosome overheard the men at the next table discussing the punishment for Lothar Metal and his associates. Leaning to one side, the pair listened and attempted to glean any information about the criminal and obtained an earful. After listening for several minutes, they had learned apparently the criminal was a low-level individual in the crime syndicate and was apparently a fence for some stolen goods. His arrest and loss of the goods had apparently sent ripples through the seedy underbelly of Phoenix and Dockside. The two also overheard that Johan was apparently overjoyed, leading them to believe that Lothar's group and Johan were on opposite sides of crime. The final bit of information gained prior to the men leaving was that Lothar's boss, Gregor, was apparently plenty mad and also in big trouble. When hearing this tidbit, both Elaine and Welby looked at each other with a smug look. The men departed the tavern, and the adventurers finished their meals. The waitress thanked them for coming by and asked them to tell the half-elven friend to stop by any time. Sister Elaine managed a faux smile and stated that she would extend the invitation to her comrade. The bill came to three silver swords, and Welby slid the jeweled dagger over to the waitress, pointing out, keep the change, my love. Sister Elaine grabbed her robe and shot the halfling an angry glance. The gracious waitress replied broadly at the extravagant tip and ran to the barkeep to keep it safe. The pair jumped off their stools and Welby took one last sad look at the gambling going on and adjusted himself. Sighing deeply, he followed the reverent daughter outside to begin their search for Gregor Finewire again. Once outside, they noticed several people running quickly to the docks. Looking at each other and shrugging their shoulders, they headed that way to see what all the fuss was about. Working their way through a small crowd, they were able to get a good vantage point. Several muscular sailors were straining on a rope as another sailor came out of the water. Several tugs later, the men had pulled forth a cask with sand pouring out of it. Another rope attached to the keg was drawn up revealing a body with a slit throat. The men hoisted a fairly recent dead body, and the cleric gasped. Have you ever seen a dead body before? inquired the halfling. The woman nodded and pointed. That is no body. That is Gregor Finewire, she whispered. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.